Hello and welcome back to the East Lake Pet Talk podcast. I'm veterinarian Dr. Karen Fling, joined with my co-host here. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Will McCauley. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, have some great stuff in store for you today, a little uh, trip outside the studio. Right, yeah. right. Just earlier today we visited my own house and finally, finally after 10 episodes, 10 weeks, we put in part of Invisible Fences system uh, that it's um, uh, a barrier protection system for our cat, John. And John, if any of you watched the earlier episode, or any, I think I've talked to him, talked about it a few times about how he's such a sneaker and shoots out that front door Um, but back in episode three we actually visited with ginger walton with the invisible Mm -hmm. fence company and she talked a whole lot about these great products sounded great it's like a great technology it it really is and so we've actually got it in place now Um, it's amazing we'll clip away in just a moment and show how the installation is done really how simple it is and it's just such a neat little sensor they have right by the door Mm -hmm. it's small it's easy to set up um, just no hassles you're not going to have a a lot of heavy duty wiring around the wire to bury yeah that's what right. i was right you know, yeah nothing really like that it, it's just a, a sensor type thing right there at the doorway and then john has a special collar now mm-hmm. and uh, they can even tell by the programming with this transmitter how many times john has kind of tested the perimeter and uh, tried to shoot out that door <laughs> yeah, and how successful yeah. the 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 product is so wow, very cool yeah, let's we'll cut away and see it hi come on in <laughs> come on in Well, today we're joined by Ginger and Craig Walton, and we're really excited to have you here today in my own house to uh, talk about Invisible Fence and deal with our problem that we're having with our sneaker cat, John. Um, And for those of you who have seen the podcast before, you know that uh, John is our, as I affectionately call him, our alley cat, uh, who is a rescue cat, and he just can't get over wanting to sneak outside and go exploring and so uh, as a veterinarian of course and a cat lover I know the only safe cat is an indoor cat and so in our neighborhood we worry not only about cars but we've got lots of owls we've got lots of coyotes around here and uh, also as much as I hate to say it a neighbor who doesn't like cats and so we're really (laughs) concerned for John's safety and uh, we want to see him uh, be protected and I was especially excited uh, to learn that Invisible Fence offers a product that is a barrier protection for like a a doorway. And I think even though I thought I've known a lot about Invisible Fence Mm -hmm. products, uh, I've always pictured the whole perimeter um, uh, yard coverage and that kind of thing. And uh, we're talking about really in John's case, just a doorway uh, that we're trying to keep him from escaping through. So tell us what you've got in your hands here. All right, so what we have is the indoor transmitter. Okay. okay. This piece here will go, obviously, down here by the door. This will be the receiver that he wears. Okay, now, Ginger, I know when we talked about this before, you said this little receiver here only weighs about half an ounce. Yes. Is that right? Yes, that is. That's amazing. Definitely it is. lightweight. Mm-hmm. It is. It's small. And we use this one for, you know, small pets up to big pets. So, I mean, the collars have a, a thousand possible combinations, and so we can make it you know, customize for the different size and right. Pets and and so on. this is going to work to where John, as he approaches the doorway, gets a little signal uh, from the collar that feeds off of this device. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And um, I was surprised to learn that there's a, a sound we hear too. Tell me about how that works. Yeah, uh, it it gives an audible. I mean, the audible can be turned on or off, but we we usually use it. Um, so it so gives them a sound cue does. to let them know it, it that does. they're getting and close to getting that signal. Right. Yes, ma'am. And and I understand that with this color, you can use a different range of settings from a low signal to a higher one. Absolutely. And uh, I think in our case, what we're going to do with John is just start with the very lowest setting possible, uh, just to give him a little sensation to where he knows he's approaching that doorway. Absolutely. And, and every pet acts different. You know, some will get into it and act like they've been trained forever. Um, Some act like really nothing's going on. It's about conditioning a little bit. So they get up there and get into it and then they don't. Right. And you mentioned training. Uh, You actually do provide some training and support uh, relative to the different products. And uh, do you come out typically just once or are there multiple times you come out or how does that work? Every application again is different. You know, sometimes we can, we can do it in one trip. Typically, it's two. You know, you would do low-level corrections. We leave you with some homework to do, and then we come back and 
see where they've been. We put it on a little programmer that we have, tells us what they've been up to, and um, then we adjust it accordingly. And adjust it accordingly. Absolutely. Well, Typically, it's it's two trips, but you know it can be whatever we need to do to make it work. That's right. great. Well, that's nice that you offer that training and support. And I understand uh, on the outside chance that it didn't work for a pet, that you'll actually guarantee all the equipment and uh, yes. uh, offer a 100% guarantee on that. Is Absolutely. that right? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah, we well, want it to work. That's great. Well, we want it to work too, because we really <laughs> want John to be sure. safe. And so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the transmitter down here by the area that we're trying to keep them out of and I'll take the collar, and what I do is just turn it on. This is creating a radius, a lot like a giant beach ball. And so what I'll do is I'll tune it up till I get it to where I'm looking for. I don't know if you can hear that or not. We're getting a little beep here, right here about the edge. And so I just check it as if I were the sneaky cat to see where it's gonna be. I like this adjustment for it. So now what I would do is I'll take some of these flags, and these give them a visual, and I'll just bend them like so. And here in this application, I can just slip it, slip it underneath the, the carpet here. And what I'm trying to do is just give the cat a, a heads up, basically, as to the barrier or, or his area I want him to avoid, which is obviously the doorway here. And if we, if we weren't doing it here, I'd be taping them to the floor. But, no reason for that here in this application. Now when you have little ones, a lot of times they'll try to pick up the flags and mess with it, so that can be a little bit of a challenge, but we're just gonna place these like so. And what this is doing is, it's creating a little zone here where he's gonna wanna stay out of it. And these units are rechargeable, so we just charge them up. They run about 30 days or so on a single charge. We've got a little indicator that'll tell you when they need to be charged. And then once I've got them placed, I'll come back and just check to make sure that it's where I want. I would say I want it to be as short as possible so I don't interfere with his area any more than I have to, and yet still have a good barrier or boundary for him. All right, so the next step is we fit the collar on him and make sure we've got a good fit. We're, we're trying to make contact with the skin and not so much the hair. And then from this point, what we'll do is we'll try to entice them into the signal field. Okay. From there comes the training. From here comes so, the training. All Absolutely. Right, very good. Okay. Well, Ginger and Craig, thank you so much for Absolutely. being here today and for thank helping us nice. with this process. And uh, we'll let you know how John does. More to follow. So from here, the invisible fence people are literally going to be working with us in as many visits as we need to get John trained. But the word on the street is that this is already working in our house. Uh, John walks up to those flags, and I've, I've been away from the house most of the day taking care of other things, but uh, the kids are telling me that John's looking at those flags going, okay, I'm going to keep a wide berth. So. That's where, where not to go. That's great. Right? Already one day, and it's already working. One day, even huh. just a few hours. Yeah. And so uh, really exciting, and in talking to the people with invisible fence they don't limit this just to cats actually their biggest customer uh, are the dogs that need this this help um, but it works well for cats um, they say they can set up a perimeter barrier any place if you don't want your cat jumping up on kitchen counters if you don't want the dog getting into the kitty litter box mm -hmm. who's heard of that problem yeah <laughs> <laughs> we hear that almost on a daily yeah. basis mm -hmm. um, or if pets aren't allowed upstairs or if you want to have a dog that's allowed through a doorway but not a cat you know mm -hmm. they can set it up just to customize for whatever your needs are so I didn't think about that with the the beach ball thing that he talked about um, you know kind of that 3d effect you can keep the cats and dogs and dogs from getting on the counters getting on tables or furniture that's a great use of it as well right right so there's any application that you need mm -hmm. and and certainly um, they're happy to work with you and they say really before just saying oh this is how much it's going to cost or this is you know a, a one-size-fits-all program they can really meet with you and dis discuss through what the options are to make sure that you know, sometimes like in our case something that we didn't even know was available mm -hmm. uh, provided a great solution so good well yeah if any questions uh, y'all can send them to us or contact invisible fence directly um, to get in touch with us as always you can call 972-808-6038 to leave us a voicemail or you can send us an email at podcast at we love pets.net 
Now, when we closed last time, we talked a little bit about some of our listener and viewer feedback. And one of the really nice people that uh, corresponded with us uh, asked about how I'd lost my my dog, Chloe, that we lost fairly recently. And I had mentioned just briefly last week that uh, we actually lost her to chocolate toxicity. And um, it's a tough thing for me to talk about. And I think certainly as a veterinarian, uh, you think these things won't happen to you. But uh, we lost Chloe due to chocolate chocolate consumption that came from an Easter basket. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those things that you don't even think of. The basket wasn't really in a place where we expected her to even be able to get to it. Um, But chocolate is a food product and dogs or cats for that matter will get into places where they'll seek these things out if they can smell it and sense that it's there. And uh, it happened very quickly. And uh, the typical history from a chocolate toxicity problem is that you'll see digestive upsets, frequently vomiting vomiting and diarrhea and we believe that in Chloe's case because she was so very tiny that even just a little bit of chocolate for her was enough to trigger a heart arrhythmia but we did find evidence of candy wrappers around some spit up with chocolate and and she was gone by the time we got home I mean we found her past and deceased. It can be very quick and that brings up a good point of a lot of times we'll get this call uh, oh you know they the a uh, pet owner calls us up and says, my dog ate um, X amount of some milk chocolate or some white chocolate. And that's a good thing to know uh, what type of chocolate it is because there's different toxicity levels depending on the type of chocolate. And what it actu- depends how much the pet weighs. Yes, if it's a exactly. little tiny dog yeah. like Chloe, the risk mm-hmm. is much higher than if you have a big Labrador. Just like anything, it's the dose, dose thing. dependence. Yeah, yeah, dose right. dependence. And so what I'd like to talk about um, is actually what is in chocolate that causes these problems because, you know, we eat it just fine. I eat it a little too much. Um, and so <laughs> but I don't have these effects usually. Um, the actual compounds or the chemical family that in, is in chocolate um, is called methylxanthines. And the two big ones we think of when we're talking about toxicity is one called theobromine and the other is just plain caffeine. Um, so these are Um, chemical compounds that actually cause a wide range of clinical signs like we talked about. The first thing we usually see is GI upset. So vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, a lot of lethargy, just that not feeling good. um, And and sometimes increased urination in some cases. Mm -hmm. Some cases, yeah. You know, and those we have to treat just like anything else. But the really ones we worry about the most are the ones that we see these higher toxicity doses, um, which in case uh, those cases can cause things like cardiac arrhythmias, they can cause seizures, they can cause uh, kidney damage eventually, they can right. cause uh, renal sure impairment, can. especially with them decreased blood flow to the kidneys because right. of these heart problems. And, and the darker the chocolate, the greater the risk. And of course, the greater the quantity, the greater the risk. Yep. But white chocolate... We don't need to worry about. Yeah, it's not actually chocolate. So it's that, more sugar than it is anything <laughs> yeah. in the way of chocolate or a exactly. caffeine type Doesn't product. Doesn't mean feed your dogs tons of white chocolate. It's <laughs> right. Not the right. Way to go. No, don't do that either. <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing to worry about, you know, a lot of people want to stay away from sugar, but the artificial sweeteners are an ultra high risk mm-hmm. uh, sort of product for for dogs and cats. Mm-hmm. So yeah. best to keep these things completely out of reach. And even when you think your pet can't get to these things, just don't take a chance. Lock them up in the fridge, the freezer. Put on a high shelf and and get them out of the way yeah get them out of the way going back to the thing you talked about um the dose and the size of the dog um, affecting how toxic it is there is a great thing for um, our listeners to use Um, of course it's not going to take the place of contacting your veterinarian and getting their input but on petmd.com there's a dog chocolate toxicity meter where you can select your dog's weight the type of chocolate that your dog had consumed or may have consumed and the amount consumed in terms of ounces and it'll show whether the um, effects are likely to be severe or mild or um, you know no effects right. um, and so it's and, very and with useful. any of these things that our pets eat if you get early veterinary attention mm-hmm. sometimes we can actually induce vomiting get these things up and out of the stomach before there's even a chance for absorption and even if there's not a toxicity issue if you eat enough white chocolate even yeah. you can wind up having gastrointestinal upset problems so yeah. better to just stay away from all of it yeah and bring your rec- doctor in the loop too. always <laughs> recommend getting the doctor in the loop but that is a uh, um, a resource we want you to, to know about there on petmd.com Absolutely. And what else is new in the animal world these so, days? Back to some animal news. Um, it's a great story um, about a dog that walked 20 blocks from her home um, to visit her owner who is fighting cancer in a hospital um, down the down the street. Um, a miniature schnauzer um, called, where is it? 
Sissy, yep, walked a 10 year old miniature schnauzer named Sissy. Sissy walked all the way from Mercy uh, Medical Center in Cedar Rapids um, down to, uh, or from her home to there. And it was 20 wow. blocks. Found the way that? down there, walked That's into the love. lobby. Yeah. That's love. <laughs> yeah. Smelled the owner or something or found out where to go. So you yeah. can't keep a good a, dog down. That's right. Yeah. And a little better, a uh, little better news. Um, Ordering a stuffed animal that looks just like your pet. Would that sound like something you'd like to do? Absolutely. There's a company in Louisville um, that actually would like to do that for you. That's called Cuddle Clones. You send in pictures of your dog or cat or gecko, what have you, and they will make a stuffed pig. animal pig, <laughs> a stuffed animal that is made to order to look exactly like your pet. So I think great, that's cool. Maybe a late Valentine's Day present or birthday present would be a really cool thing. So that's Cuddle Clones. That's great. Well, mm-hmm. speaking of Valentine's, that makes me think about the month of February, which is traditionally Dental Health Month for a lot of folks, Mm -hmm. but uh, at East Lake we always celebrate Dental Health Month in March, so that's right around the corner, Mm -hmm. and it's a great time to be thinking about your pet's oral health and hygiene, and so next week when we come back, we're going to talk a lot more about dental health for your dog or cat or pig or Mm -hmm. not necessarily your gecko, but uh, (laughs) we'll give you lots of great tips. So uh, we're about out of time for today, but we'll be back with more next week, same time, same place. Thanks for being here. Thanks. All right. Well, as always, we'd like to remind you that we have a pet of the week up for adoption at the East Lake Pet Orphanage. This week, it's Eleanor Rose, a mixed breed dog who was brought up from Houston, along with her eight puppies that were born in Houston and transported up here with her. She's very sweet, and whoever would like to put an application for her, just know that she will be fully spayed, vaccinated, and microchipped. And she's very sweet, a very loving pet, and make a great uh, addition to your home.